back from one inspirational story to the next. Now I'm joined by Walter Forston, who is here to talk to us about his story about winning the National Truman Award. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank, thank you for having me. So first things first, we all want to know how you felt when you won that National Truman Award. Um, it took a while to sink in at first. I mean, at first, like, uh, Dr. Casciato from the uh, Office of Distinguished Fellowships called me, and I was expecting a call from him during that week to f find out if I had won or not. And um, he just, he said, I needed to talk to you. I need you to talk with somebody. And I kind of had suspicion, but when I got there, it was like, you know, there was nobody there. I was mm -hmm. expecting to see, like, people, and there was nobody there. So I was like, okay, maybe I didn't win. Then he took me to a room that had, you know, my mom was there, uh, Barry Qualls, Dean Vicki Brooks from EOF, Dean Manning, and a bunch of other people, especially, like, Professor Roden. And, uh, and it was just, like, it was surreal. Like, it didn't. It didn't sink in until hours later that, that I actually won. I'm sure it's still sinking in. Yeah. So briefly just tell people who don't know what the National Truman Award is. Okay, so Harry S. Truman, uh, the scholarship, is an award that um, is given to uh, undergraduates, undergraduate juniors who are pursuing degrees in uh, government or public service. It's a, a highly competitive national award that... Um, pays $30,000, up to $30,000 for two to three years of graduate school. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just to give you an idea of like what it is, like nationwide, only four people per institution can be nominated to even apply for it. Okay. And um, so nationwide, there were uh, 594 applic applicants wow. from like 272 universities. And of those, 191 people were selected as finalists mm -hmm. to be interviewed from 124 schools. And of those 191 people, uh, there were 54 awards given out. That's crazy. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. So a lot of people would say that your story is one that you rose from the top and now you're beating all of the odds. Can you just tell us a little bit about your story from uh, until the time that you won the award? Okay, so um, back in um, February 2008, I was uh, sentenced to uh, six years in prison with a mandatory parole and eligibility of 25 and a half months. And... Um, I mean, from the outset, I just had a bleak and kind of grim outlook mm -hmm. on life. I mean, because I just, at, at that time, I, I understood the uh, societal stigma of being a felon and, yes. and, and, and what it meant for me and my road ahead and, and how much harder and nearly impossible it would be to try to transcend that. So, you know, I mean, I tried to remain positive, but while I was in prison, that's when I really began to cling to um, my spirituality more mm -hmm. and... and you know, try to live on Christian values and morals. And um, I just try to remain positive. And while I was in prison, I met Professor Roden, who was influential in, in getting me into Rutgers University. And, uh, you know, Rutgers welcomed me with open arms. And, I mean, I'm just, I'm happy that, you know, out of any place that I could have gone that I did come here because, you know, this being such, you know, like a liberal uni university who just thinks outside of the box, didn't look at me as, you know, uh, 810161D, which is my prison number, uh -huh. uh, they looked at me as Walter, and, and they, 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 they received me as somebody with, you know, experiences that could add to the diversity of the university, and they didn't withhold any opportunities back, and I was able to explore and take advantage of opportunities that, you know, put me in great positions. That's awesome. And you told uh, the Rutgers Today people in your article that you know, the officer that arrested you said to you, you know your life is over. Now, what would you say to that officer if you could, if you could talk to him today? If, if, I, if I could talk to, his name was Officer Calabrese. I'll never I'm forget sure, it. I'm sure you'll always remember. And um, he told me my life was over. And, you know, like, I, I, I believed him. Mm -hmm. I took him at his word. I was like, you're probably right about that. But, um, you know, honestly, if I did meet him again, I, I would want to thank him. Um, not, you know... For I mean, just because even though I was what would, would even though I was what would be considered to be successful um, as a drug dealer, you know, making money and, and being able to be self sufficient and buy things that I wanted, I was on a, a, a treacherous and, and dangerous path, and I mean, I honestly probably would have ended up in prison for a long, a much much longer time had I been caught later down the road due to the progression, mm -hmm. or or dead. So I mean. He he said my life was over, and I mean my life as a drug dealer was over. But my, my life he actually saved, and you know I'm able to do much much more with it now because of that day. So I would actually thank him. It's amazing that you have that outlook now. So 
what would you, obviously you're still a student, you know, you're dealing with all of your social life, your schoolwork, it's a lot to handle. So what advice would you give as such a successful student to other students at Rutgers who are struggling or trying to get a scholarship for other reasons too? Um, one of the main things that I would, you know, really recommend any student at Rutgers, and I mean, this is something that I say all the time, mm -hmm. and I feel so I understand it because of my experience, you know, and losing everything that was ever, like, it, going, going through my experience really clarified for me things that are important and yeah. things that aren't. So, I mean, I think I just have a really clear understanding of it. And I, I tell people all the time, the number one thing that you need to do at a university or at any type of environment you're in is to expand your social capital and to build your network of people so that, you know, you, you, you have people that you can plug into. And I, I firmly believe that you go to college just for that. You, I mean, you learn something along the way, but you're not expected to remember everything you've ever learned in your classes. But, I mean, you pay tuition, and it's graded on the level of professionals that are at a university. And Rutgers is a, you know, is, is, is a great institution. But that's why Harvard costs so much. That's why Princeton costs so much, because you're exposed to a network of professionals that allow the university to charge you that much. And it's your job in that limited amount of time to establish those contacts and make those connections and, and expand your network. And I think that that is, besides maintaining a, a a pretty good GPA. That is the most thing you can do. That, that is the best thing you can do. That's awesome. I've never looked at it that way. That's such a great way of looking at school and seeing how rewarding it really can be. So everybody wants to know what, obviously this award is for graduate school, right? Yes. So what are your plans post Rutgers? You're a junior now, right? Yes. Okay. So p post Rutgers, I definitely want to pursue a PhD program in exercise physiology, but I really would like my research to focus on prison populations. I'm interested in obesity and type 2 diabetes and, and actually cognition. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those two pathologies are really correlated heavily with the cognitive decline, and exercise seems to be able to reverse that or attenuate those, those um, effects. So, I'm really interested in looking at the prison population because for two reasons. Number one, I, I'm just, I want to stay connected to the prisons because that's really going to help, you know, my social justice efforts after, you know, obtaining a PhD, I'll have an academic backing plus, you know, experience to couple together and to actually hopefully make a difference in um, prison reform, uh, educational like prison reform. So it, it sounds like you're going back and making a difference in something that really affected your own life and obviously you're taking your story and moving other people and inspiring other people to do great things. Thank you so much for joining us today.